Hello, Jenny Hall here as a guest designer for Miss Ink Stamps. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm stamping with the Fall Bouquet Stamp Set from Miss Ink Stamps, and I'm going to be doing some water coloring. I have a few supplies here to do my water coloring, and I'm going to use a piece of watercolor paper on the smooth side and do some no line watercolor. This is going to be achieved with an ink from Ink on 3 called Fade Out Ink. And this ink allows for the color that is given to the paper, the ink turns into that color. So that's going to help us get a no line look, kind of like a watermark look, but a little bit different. So this is a fun technique that I hope that you will enjoy and try very soon. I'm going to add images to three different places on this piece of paper. Now you see that I am got the paper half on and half off the misty, and that's perfectly okay. It's just making sure that I turn that stamp to get a different part of it, and it works out beautifully. Now here I'm adding some ink refills or liquid watercolor from Ink on 3, and this is the Atelier inks, and all it takes is one drip. One drip is enough. So you can see the stamped lines here on the paper, but they are very light. And this ink, again, will pick up the color that's given to it, and it'll turn the stamped line into that color. So instead of there just kind of being an ink that's going to fade into nothing, then it kind of fades into, it's called fade out, but maybe I think it should be called fade into ink. <laughs> Anyhow, our technique is to scribble color across the stamped lines and fill the image loosely with color. It does not have to be precise or perfect, which makes this a technique that anybody of any skill level can find success with. So if you took a look at the preview thumbnail, then you can see that there's loads of colors and it's a great big rainbow on the paper. But how do we get from scribbling to the finished rainbow look? So I'd like to share that process with you. And as you can see here, I'm mixing up a few colors. The red, orange, and yellow is concentrated on the top right cluster of flowers. Even the leaves are yellow green. And then I placed some of the yellow ink or liquid watercolor onto the next stamped image on the left and made sure that the leaves were a little bit more to the true green. Worked in some teal colors. And then on the very bottom to that stamped cluster, I am working the green in with some blues to where it's more blue-green and maybe uh, not so much green, but more of a blue-green. So I'm filling up these areas here. You can see me mixing some colors on the paper and on the palette. And the liquid watercolors go a very long way. Just one little drip's all it takes. So now you can see that we have a rainbow progression going on and you could stop here and have a really pretty card. But we're gonna really take it up a notch and we're gonna add some splatters. Now the first splatter that I added was red. You can see that when I'm scribbling off the brush, I'm changing the color. So I get the old color off before I dip it into the next color. So from the very top, I've added some red splatters, then right under that and overlapping it, some orange. Then we're on to yellow, and then we're down to green. And basically, we're progressing with the rainbow and bringing those colors into the stamped and the unstamped areas. Now use your water bottle to spritz and watch the magic happen. The liquid watercolor is really concentrated ink and it works beautifully. It's water reactive and you can see how beautiful it all just, just sitting and watching it is something that I enjoy. Now I'm using my damp cloth to just kind of pick up any areas that start to pool and get a little bit too globby. 
And I'm also careful of where the orange and the green may overlap because it might cause brown. A little bit of brown's okay, but we don't want too much brown. Now letting this sit, it will, it will kind of keep mixing together. So I use the heat tool just to kind of speed it along a little bit, you know, for video purposes here. And the last thing we're gonna to do to the panel is to use shark tooth white pigment ink from Ink on 3 and do some white splatters. And that'll bring it and lighten it back up a little more. Now that we've got all those crazy colors going on that are just so much fun, we need a place for our eye to rest and to be able to read a sentiment. So I've got a piece of black cardstock here and I'm using some detailed white embossing powder to stamp one of the many stamped images that are from the Fall Bouquet stamp set. This is a really great stamp set. There's so many wonderful things over at Miss Ink, and that is missink.com. So you should check it out, head over there, and see all the beautiful stamps. Now I'm going to attach this panel to my slimline card, and my slimline card base, after it's folded, is eight and a half by three and a half. So I'm going to do the little line it up trip trick here. And I do this whenever I'm using some kind of panel that's going to be hard for me to line up if I'm not using liquid glue. Because liquid glue gives you that few extra seconds that you need. But this trick works really good. If you have not checked it out, just watch. Maybe back the video up a little bit if you need to. But this will help you get a really straight lined up panel attached to your card base. Now we're going to give a flag banner on the sentiment here after I trimmed it down and place that in an area that's not going to take away too much interest and added some double-sided foam adhesive. Now here is something really fun. Miss Ink Stamps is really known for their beautiful stamps and stencils but she also carries some very beautiful glitter. And it's not just regular glitter, it's color changing glitter. And I am in love. And so this color is called Mermaid Lagoon. And how do you bring glitter into a regular card? Well, my dears, you just put some glue onto your panel and sprinkle on some of this beautiful holographic color changing glitter. And just like your embossing paste, you could use your embossing bag if you want to at that point, but this is pretty much dry, so I'm okay. Now look at the beautiful highlights that match all the rest of this beautiful rainbow goodness. I can see the stamped lines through. And here's another version. If you'd like just a less busy card and just a little bit more scribbles, but less splatter and mist. I would love to hear which version you like better, the one with more powerful color or the one that's a little bit more shabby chic. I wanna give a big thanks out to Miss Ink Stamps for having me as their designer. I will have another video to come this month and thanks for watching.